Welcome to the Poor Man's Chemist. In this video, we are going to be making thallium cyanide, the culmination of my work over the last couple of weeks. This should be very simple and straightforward and to the point. I'm still not 100% sure how this actually works because thallium cyanide is actually quite soluble in water. Um, I'm thinking it has to be the common ion effect. That is the only thing that makes sense. What we have here is a saturated solution of thallium nitrate and over here a nearly saturated solution of sodium potassium cyanide. I say nearly saturated because I'm, I rinsed it from one beaker into another, but it's pretty damn close. This is also pretty damn close. Um, it took several minutes for the last crystals to finally dissolve. So it's cold out here. So everything should be good and saturated. Thallium cyanide is not the most stable compound in the world. So you definitely don't want to get it too hot. It will not melt. It will decompose. Um, I could only find solubility data up to, I think, 30-something C. I'm sure it's on the screen. But I imagine beyond that, that, that's probably, it stops there because beyond that, it breaks down. I don't know that for a fact, but I suspect that is the case. Now, obviously, this is a very dangerous compound. Um, it is water-soluble. It's full of cyanide, and if the cyanide doesn't kill you now, the thallium will kill you later. It may absorb through the skin, for all I know, like other thallium compounds. Will the cyanide absorb as well? Who knows? Um, the amount of information out there on this compound, despite the fact that it's supposed to have some kind of uses in organic chemistry that I could not find, um, there's not much info out there about this shit at all. And if it wasn't for atomistry, I wouldn't even know that it would be possible to make it this way because I would never guess based on the little, you know, physical data I was able to find for thallium cyanide. So yes, this compound is extremely dangerous. It does not appear to be photosensitive because I already tested out this reaction yesterday. Um, when I first made it, it was slightly discolored. You can see that in the picture there. But, and as you can see in the other picture, when I came out this morning after leaving it out in the sun basically all afternoon and all evening yesterday, it was nice and shiny white and settled out at the bottom of the beaker. So if it's photosensitive, it doesn't seem to be terribly so. So anyway, let's get on with the show. Okay, where are my magnets, where are my magnets, ah, there was a little bit of iron still in this cyanide solution, I thought there might be, alright, are we focused, my moment of triumph, compound I have been after for so long. And this is how it was yesterday, too. Originally, when I did it, it was discolored. It's also supposed to form complexes with alkali cyanide, but I couldn't get it to dissolve in excess cyanide yesterday. All right. Let's see what that got us. Well, there's some in there. Stir bar is getting bitchy for some reason. Usually that's a good sign, I guess. Oh, that's kind of weird, actually. There. Stir, you fucker. What is your problem? Well, normally it only does that if there's actually a lot of solid in there. 
I don't know that there's a lot in there, but there is some. That's all I fucking care about. We got it. That's it. After fucking months of trying to make this shit. Well, I've only actually tried to make it like three times now, but still, after two failures, finally have some success. It's very nice. Yay! All right. So, yes, this is what it looks like after it sits for a day. See? I don't know what the deal is. Thallium azide did the very same thing, though. Beats the fuck out of me what's going on there. I'd swear it looks like it's getting lighter over time. <laughs> when I posted a picture of it yesterday, somebody said it looked like a beaker full of jizz. I mean, they're, they're not totally wrong. Anybody that knows about that god-awful, horrible story that's gone around the internet for a while there... You know the one I'm talking about with the jar. Yeah, that one. Where'd that come from? Like 4chan? It's disturbing. People are weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. Not a jar full of jizz. That's not great. That's, that's vile. But this, this, the poison jizz of the earth. This is awesome. Earth jizz. <laughs> oh, Jesus, man. Can y'all tell I haven't had enough sleep last night? I, I didn't sleep well. <laughs> I've had way too much coffee. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, I'm going to let this stir for a little while longer, and I'm going to let it settle. I'm not going to try to filter this because um, the particles are so small, man. It would be such an amazingly massive pain in the ass to try to filter this fucking shit. So what I'm going to do is let everything settle, and then I'm just going to very carefully decant the liquid off of there. Of course, I'll try to pour it off as carefully as possible. And... Um, then, uh, I'm not sure. I definitely have to come up with some way of precipitating out any remaining thallium without doing anything that's going to react with the remaining cyanide. The remaining cyanide is easy. That can be broken down with sodium hypochlorite over the course of about 24 hours. But normally, I would drop out the remaining thallium as the iodide, but... I don't know that it's necessarily the wisest idea to combine something like iodide with cyanide. I'm not 100% sure, and I really don't want that to go tits up. All right, people, so it's the next day, and I let this stuff sit overnight and settle out. And then I removed as much of the water as I could with a pipette. And whether it sits in the sun, sits in the dark, doesn't seem to matter. The color dramatically lightens over time. This is probably a few grams of it. It doesn't look like much, but there's actually a fair amount of it there. As expected, it is quite heavy. There's no good way to rinse it since thallium sulfate is fairly heavy in water. I don't know. I'm going to try adding a little water in there and pipetting it out of there just to see if I can't get some of it out. Um, cause there should still be a fair amount of sodium potassium cyanide in there and it will contaminate our product. I don't know. The literature says that thallium cyanide is not that soluble in water, but then all the numbers that I see make it sound like it is. I don't know. I'll try it and let you know. Anyway, once that's done, I'm just going to put it inside and let it dry out. Um, I don't really know what else to do. You can't heat it up um, or it'll decompose. So it's just going to kind of have to dry out in the desiccator inside where it's warm for a couple of days. So I will come back when there is something to show you guys.
Okay, everybody. So the thallium cyanide has been drying out indoors in the desiccator for a couple days. I just put it in here just to be on the safe side in case it was like the thallium cyanide decided to be difficult with the whole light thing. Although it does not seem to be. I mean, I don't know. Thallium salts are technically photosensitive. At least some of them are. But one trend that I've noticed is that that seems to be in the long term. I haven't seen too many of them. In fact, I can only think of one time I have ever seen them start to change color in the short term. And even then, the color change was not exactly what I would have expected from photo decomp. So I don't know what to think. Anywho, this stuff should be dry now. Let's just, oh yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, I don't like this angle. Yes, it is dry. And just like the cadmium cyanide, it is light and powdery. Look at that shit. Oh, yeah. This stuff has the potential to be all manners of evil. And look at that static cling to the glass. I assume that's what that is. I don't think it's all that hygroscopic. I could be wrong. Oh, you just seem like you would be so evil and make lots of dust. Well, I say that, but it's kind of clumpy. Are you staying focused, piece of shit? I'm sorry, guys, I can't risk touching the camera and cross-contaminating anything. There is a reason I do this shit and I don't die. And that is because I am very careful. Okay. How are you in there? No violent motions. I just know that if I could zoom in and see what was going on on a microscopic level, there would be all these little bitty particles all over the place. I can't see them, but I know they're there. Maybe time to take a break from the thallium for a little while. At least with the with thallium compounds, I want to recover. That th This is the most dangerous part of this shit most of the time, is trying to get the pure compound once it's dry into a bottle. All right, this thing is covered. I tell you what, I'm dropping a bucket of water. Deal with the dust that way. All right, we are not terribly concerned about yield. So if I lose some, I don't really care. Okay, I'm going to take this outside. I'll be right back. All right, people. There we go. So I weighed this stuff, and what I was able to recover was exactly 500 milligrams of thallium cyanide. Now, obviously, I wasn't able to completely rinse off all of the sodium potassium cyanide solution from it, so... I imagine at this point has probably become sodium potassium cyanate. So that's definitely going to be a contaminant in there. Nevertheless, the overwhelming majority of this stuff is thallium cyanide. So yes, if you were to consume what is in this vial, you would absolutely die. Probably in very short order from the cyanide before the thallium would have time to do much of anything. 
I came across this case study this morning when I was perusing Google about this pharmacist that consumed a massive dose of mercuric cyanide, presumably as the solution, because um, otherwise it would be like chewing up fucking Drano crystals. And um, he died. They found his body like 11 days later, but... I mean, from what I was able to gather reading this thing, the cyanide killed him long before the mercury had time to do much of anything to him. So, I would imagine that would be the case here. There's so much cyanide in this that it would probably kill you long before the thallium could do much of anything. Although, it is a contact poison um, dissolved in dimethyl sulfoxide. I would imagine it would, you know, become... A much more powerful contact poison so don't do that uh even in water it would be pretty bad i wouldn't want to get this on my skin yeah see even i'm wearing gloves for this one kids <laughs> yeah just to handle the fucking bottle at least until i have a chance to wipe it down real good i don't even want to touch the outside of this fucking thing um i did find a paper that detailed a more efficient synthesis of this stuff but i, I barely had time to look at it before i had to go to work today uh, it also gave some uses for thallium cyanide and organic synthesis so it does have practical uses i just, i don't know that it's used so much anymore i imagine people you know did all kinds of research gymnastics in order to find better alternatives to that pussies <laughs> i don't know i couldn't find anything in the encyclopedia of rate of reagents for organic synthesis for thallium cyanide i couldn't even find any companies um selling this stuff it, it's a pretty hard compound to come by again pussies <laughs> Oh, it's so great, man. I have wanted this shit for so long, and now I finally got it. Oh, it's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Oh, in the name of God. Now I know what it feels like to be God. Oh, of course, now the question is, can we make it even more poisonous? And I think the answer to this question is yes. I think that if we co-crystallized it with mercuric cyanide, we would be able to create something that was truly diabolical, right? If it was ingested, there might be hope. Like if you, you know, cram some like cyanide antidote into somebody within, I don't know, seconds, and then Prussian blue in very short order after that, cram that down their gullet, and then, um... I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I, you can't do chelation therapy when thallium is present in the body because it mobilizes more thallium from fatty tissues into the CNS. And oh man, I was doing some reading too on the damage thallium does to the body. Holy shit. Like if you don't have some nice toxic anion like cyanide to mercifully end your suffering quickly and you die of thallium poisoning, holy god man there's like you know cardiac necrosis and like your heart tissue dies and all this fucked up shit and your liver is all wrecked and your brain's all fucked up and your nerves are all degenerating yeah man it's pretty fucking hardcore this is the most metal fucking compound i have ever made man it is like brutality crystallized down to its physical essence and i have it in a bottle oh god i think i might need to go change my shorts now anyway <laughs> if you've enjoyed watching me risk my life to make insanely toxic shit that's so goddamn sexy then give this video a like maybe throw a few bucks my way because you know thallium is expensive and you know risking my life god damn it that should be worth something <laughs> subscribe comment share the video and until the next one which i don't know what the hell it's gonna be on i'll see you later oh that's so fucking great finally finally you're mine all oh, mine happy happy joy joy <laughs>